So hi everyone, um, my name's Holly Roper and I am a uh, registered associate nutritionist with, for the, with Association for Nutrition and I currently work with Quorn as their health and nutrition communications officer. Um, part of my role is being responsible for our corporate partnership with the wonderful BDA and one of the projects that we absolutely love to do as part of our partnership is to host yearly roundtables with experts like yourself. Um, our last roundtable was held by Asmina Givinci and it was all about protein quality and if there's a need to update protein guidelines which was great um, and this year we've all invited you to um, participate in this roundtable on a slightly different topic. Today we'll be discussing the need for meat free in the care sector. Now I thought I'd just spend a few minutes going through our most asked questions and hopefully set the scene nicely to what corn actually is so we're all on the same page. Um, microprotein is the main ingredient of all corn products and currently we are the largest producer of this nutritious um, fungi protein. So we often get asked a lot, what does that term fungi protein actually mean? But if you think of a mushroom, that is the fruiting body of the fungi and underneath lies an enormous, we like to call it a wood wide web of mycelium. And it's the mycelium that we're really interested in here. That's where the origins of the unique microprotein come from. Um, microprotein then goes on to contribute to our finished corn products. So although you can see on the slide, the nutritional profile of microprotein, all of our products will slightly differ in their nutritionals. And then again, another really popular question that we always get asked, especially from dietitians and nutritionists like yourself is, how is corn actually made? Um, so we have two main sites up here in Middlesbrough, which host about a hundred fermentation engineers and even more factory floor staff managing the running of the sites 24 seven, 365 days a year. So the journey starts at our first site in Belisys, which makes our microprotein. So we have these ginormous airlift fermenters, which ferment the microprotein to create an, an almost dough-like paste. Um, again, sometimes it's easier to think of it as a brewery. So whereas a, a brewery would take off the liquid to process further and leave the solids, we do it the opposite way around. We leave the liquid and we take the solids. And um, this is our microprotein paste. The paste then simply gets steam cooked, chilled and frozen. And it's these last steps which are really important to that meat-like texture. And as you can see, um, there's a few pictures of myself and my manager Hannah and our last nutrition intern Zoe during our last factory tour around Belisys. It really is such a great play, um, place. Uh, the paste then gets taken down the road to our second site in Stokesley, which then create the different shapes and package it all up and send it out to our retailers. When it comes to vegan, our microprotein paste is naturally vegan. So when it leaves Belisys, it is 100% vegan. It's when it gets to Stokesley, a binder is added to ensure that the texture is spot on. So in this instance, we do use free range egg. We do, however, have some uh, vegan products that do not contain egg. And instead we use Solanic, which is a really uh, simple potato protein as the binder. Now you're probably wondering, why don't you just use Solanic for everything and just cut out the free range egg completely? And as much as we would really like to, there's a few issues. So the first thing is there's a limited supply of Solanic. So we've got a massive team working on how we can secure a really good vegan binder in the quantities that we would need. And secondly, our factories are just not built for vegan processing. You've got to remember these plants were built decades ago when veganism was not what it is today. And so they're just not geared up for that extra heat, the time, the energy that's required um, for our vegan products. But we are completely working towards having a much larger vegan portfolio. And there's loads of discussions internally about how we can make this happen. And then I just want to throw in this slide um, to bring to your attention our research program. So every year we invest significant amounts into the support of loads of young scientists and PhD candidates. Um, we've been working with about five universities now for about three decades. And our largest cohort is probably at the University of Exeter, where we have about seven researchers currently collaborating with us. And um, what's really nice about the work that Quorn do is that we operate on a no strings attached basis. Now, this means that every single one of our researchers well, with every single one of them, we sign a legal contract to say that as a company, we cannot have any influence in the project or the results. And actually we, we encourage researchers to publish their findings, whether they're in Quorn's favor or not. Um, so when I found this out, especially as a nutritionist, you know, this is really important to me. And it's something that me and my team continuously talk about because I think it's a great example of contributing to the evidence base in a way that's honest and authentic. <laughs> 